Janice Limburner, and this is my partner, Priscilla Wilson. We are the owners of the Gourd Place, and I'd like to give you a little whirlwind tour of what you might see at the Gourd Place if you come to visit us. And in my hands is a piece of pottery made and actually invented. The process has been invented by Priscilla Wilson. We're in our gourd workshop. We call it the gourd mines down here. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit about our pottery production process. We have actually um, invented and developed a process of using gourds as molds to make pottery. So this is one of the gourd molds and you can maybe see the textures inside. And that's what it's all about because these beautiful textures will be uh, appear on the outside of the pot because I'm going to pour liquid clay inside the gourd. And now it's going to just sit here for a period of hours and what's going to happen is some of the water from the clay soaks into the gourd so then the, the lining will begin to form which will become the pot and at that point when I think I have a thick enough wall of a bowl I'll pour the excess clay out so that's why you're left with a hollow vessel but if I succeed with this casting then I will use this bowl that's made in this gourd as a mold a model to make a plaster mold and these are some of my plaster molds and that's what we're, we actually use for production. So this is a bowl that was trimmed yesterday. Maybe you can see the gourd textures on the outside of the bowl. You can see that it's, the clay is still wet. Here's one that's been drying on the shelf for a few days and it's ready to glaze. We can't glaze the pottery until it's completely dry. And then of course we'll put it in the kiln and fire it to 2300 degrees. That's why stoneware pottery is so durable. Okay, so these are some vases that have, um, are dry and ready to glaze. And for vases, we need to pour the glaze into the vase. So that's what I'm going to do with this little one. I'm going to pour some glaze in here. And then I'm going to move the glaze around in the vase. Try to get it where you can see it. And then just... Pour it back into the jar. Now I'm going to put some glaze around the outside. And then it'll, this will have to dry for quite a while before it's ready to fire. And now let's go upstairs and take a look at some of the finished products. which is surrounding us in this room and down the hallway this direction are gourds from other parts of the world. Also in this building is a display of our wildflowers that happen to be in bloom seasonally. We change them periodically whenever we see a new wildflower as we go for walks. And then we have the Gourd Made Kitchen Shop, which has gourd utensils, like a gourd colander, which Priscilla is holding. Well, I think we wanted people to know that we've been in business since 1976. 
So it's 38 years this summer, 2014. And, uh, but we moved to where we are now on Duncan Bridge Road in 1991. And over this long period that we've been in the gourd business, we have invented lots of interesting uses for gourds. Uh, we make containers, planters, toys, gourds on wheels, uh, stuffed animals with gourd heads, Christmas ornaments, just dozens, literally dozens of things that we have figured out how to make from gourds. Priscilla has another sideline business that we call Sticks and Stoneware, where she casts actual leaves, so she makes molds of the leaves, and then she cuts up the twigs of the actual piece. For instance, this is a blackberry leaf. These are blackberry twigs, or sticks, so we call it Sticks and Stoneware. So, you know you'll have a gourd education when you come to see us, as well as a very gourd time. Gourd time! <laughs>